good morning. I welcome you to the Greenville First United Methodist Church on this glorious morning. And uh, even though we live in Illinois in the Midwest and uh, you can smell spring in the air, um, it's exciting, but we also know who knows what's going to come up next week. Uh, but we'll just enjoy that excitement uh, for, for a little bit. The grass is getting green and the, the birds are singing and it's just a beautiful and wonderful time to worship in the house of the Lord. This is uh, the third Sunday of Lent as we march on our journey uh, towards Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And we are diving, continuing to dive deeper into the Lord's Prayer. Uh, this week we are focused on our daily bread and we'll learn more about what that means. But every single week as we've marched through the Lord's Prayer, we also have learned that uh, the Lord's Prayer builds on itself. Not every phrase is a different phrase and so we'll continue um, to talk about that and hopefully uh, illuminate or make the, the Lord's Prayer um, a little bit more meaningful in your life. We'll also continue to pray for one another in our community and our church and uh, all around the world as we know that uh, difficult things are happening everywhere and especially uh, in Ukraine. Um, so we'll continue to lift our hearts and voices in prayer. Uh, we'll also have times of singing and just it's so good to be gathered uh, together in the church. But at this time, let us uh, continue our worship service by standing as we are able and we will join together in our call to worship. We have come this day to learn about what God expects of us. Sometimes we really don't want to know. We are afraid to make the commitment to God's peace. God is persistent. God will not let us off the hook so easily. Open your hearts to receive forgiveness and healing. Listen to God. Be ready to work with God for hope, peace, justice, and love. Amen. Let us remain standing as we continue our service with our opening hymn. I need thee every hour. The words will be on the screen or in your hymnals on page 397.
Let us pray together. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts and spirits this morning, that we may be healed of our faithfulness, freed from our fears and anxieties, and placed on the pathways that lead to peace and service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now is our time of uh, corporate or communal prayer that we are able to pray together, not only for um, ourselves and what's going on in our midst, but also our church, our community, uh, our state, nation, and world. A reminder that um, after this service uh, concludes, uh, we will turn off the, the camera and then have a time of uh, personal joys and concerns uh, after the service is over for those um, that are gathered here today. Uh, but this is a time that within your hearts, minds, and souls here in a little bit, as I pray, we lift up a network of prayer uh, to God. As I know of things within our community, whether it's doctor's appointments and tests and surgeries and jobs and unemployment, and the list can go on and on and on, uh, we, we lift them up to the Lord. And you each know of different things that need lifted up as well, so as a community, we, we lift them up together. It helps get around that idea that, hey, once you start listing uh, people to thank, you're always bound to forget somebody. Um, you're also able to lift up the things that I've forgotten. Uh, in the midst of all that, we want to pray for the things all around the world, especially the, the conflict going on in Ukraine and for everything that's going on in Russia as well. Uh, nothing's as easy and black and white as sometimes uh, we think that it is. And so we pray. Just like whenever we pray for somebody who has been diagnosed with cancer, we know it's more than just that person. They have friends and families and doctors and nurses and the people they meet in the hospital and so many other people to pray for. So here in just a moment, we will sing our cares chorus together, and then I will pray, then we will pray the Lord's Prayer together and then sing our cares chorus once again. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. And we don't want to get caught up into words, but first we just want to say those two simple words. Thank you. Thank you for all that you continue and have done and will do in our lives. Thank you for birthdays and anniversaries. Thank you for gathering us together here this day. Thank you for friends and families. Thank you for everything that we are able to do in the last week and the things that we look forward to in the week to come. Thank you for walking alongside us in the tough moments this week. And even though sometimes we think that we did it all by ourselves, thank you for walking through us in those extravagant moments this last week as well. But we know so often our thank yous and our joy give way to the concerns within our life. And so today we, we lift them up to you. Not to get them out of the way, but to, to hand them over to you. Hand our concerns over to you so that we can worship you truly in the next moments of today. That we can realize that we're not in this alone. We have a community of faith, we have a church family, we have family and friends, but most importantly, we have the Lord our God. 
We have his son, Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit gathered up around us this day. And so whether it's anxiety and depression, whether it's addiction, whether it's the difficulties in life of unemployment or work, whether it's the tests in school or the tests that we face daily in our life, whether it's work or retirement or wherever we find the tests and difficulties in life, we lift them up to you. And we thank you, Lord, for helping us walk through each and every single one of those moments. We pray for doctor's appointments and tests. We pray for waiting on test results. We pray for those in nursing homes and those gathered at home that are homebound or mostly homebound. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are cold. We pray for those that do not have shelter. We pray for those that don't feel the love of loved ones. We continue to pray for this church, that we continue to be a beacon of hope within our community. We pray for our community of churches, and we pray for our community. We pray for community leaders, we pray for our state and national leaders, and we know that just bringing up those words bring up so many other things to pray for. We also pray for prayer, praying that this prayer isn't the only prayer that we pray or hear this week. So we continue to pray for uh, your will to be done here on earth. We pray for peace. We pray through all the conflicts and through all the things that we see in media and all around. One of the ways that we do that is through just remembering this prayer that your son Jesus taught us. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Kids, uh, for our children's illustration, they were still in the Lord's Prayer, but it's not in your bulletin this week. So if you want to follow along, you can ask uh, somebody around you. Open up yourself to page 895, I believe, and then you can follow along, or I can just tell you what the phrase is that uh, we are in this week. So we've made it through our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this week is, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And so we dive deeper into that, and uh, all of you are smart enough to know what the, the face value of this thing is, is that what's one of the things you need to survive? Food right? Or bread. Um, so you need, you need food. Anybody hungry right now? I like that there's more grown-ups that are hungry than the kids. Uh, I'm sure they will be force-fed snacks and sugar cubes and sent back home before uh, too long anyway. But yeah, sometimes uh, there are people in the world that are hungry, and even hungrier than those of us sitting here today. So that's part of the prayer. It's praying for, to be fed, both physically and emotionally and spiritually. 
all of those different things. But I think uh, as kids, you get to see this maybe a little bit every day of the week. There are kids that you go to school with uh, that come to school hungry. They go to bed hungry, and uh, you can just pray and hope that they are, are taken care of as well. And it starts opening up beyond that. Has anybody ever been really cold? Yeah, sometimes we get really cold, but we can go inside or, or put on a coat, but we have some friends that might go, go to sleep cold. And so part of the prayer is just remembering that, yes, we pray for our daily bread. We, we pray for, hey, if we're hungry, we want to be fed. But also if somebody else is hungry, we hope that they're fed. And if we feel fed and know that those around us are fed, we also begin praying for the other things that God gives us, whether it's books or uh, love or many of the other things that we get from God. And those are many of the things that we learn about in children's church and Sunday school and, and from others as well. So we go from the things that we actually need of food and shelter and warmth to things that we need next of uh, things to make us more intelligent, things to make us feel loved, things to make us feel cared for, and it continues to go on and on from there. And so as we read through this prayer, we learn that it means more than just what's right there. And so let us uh, go ahead um, and as the kids and children of God, which is all of us, uh, we will close uh, our children's moments with the Lord's Prayer once again as we're working on learning the entire thing. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And bless the kids as they go their separate ways this week and allow them to have the best week possible. And all God's children said, Amen. As uh, our kids that are interested, there is Children's Church, and Brooke is waiting for you down uh, the center aisle. And then the rest of you, um, as I say, whether you want to be or not, you're stuck with me. Um, but we are about to dive into our scripture here. And we have all of it kind of illuminated uh, within the insert of your bulletin. It'll also be on the screen. And part of why it, we don't have the Lord's Prayer written in your bulletin is I guess I gave Betty too many pieces of Scripture this week. Um, because there's a, there's a lot that works within the Lord's Prayer. And I'll get into that here in a second. But to make sure I read everything in the same order that it is on the screen, I am going to slightly turn my back to you uh, through the reading of all this. But let us follow along into God's holy word. The first scripture is from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 10 through 11. Give generously to them, and do so without a grudging heart. Then, because of this, the Lord God will bless you in all your work, and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land, therefore I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Continuing scripture in Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 through 9. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your near God. Then 
You will call and the Lord will answer you, will cry for help. And he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk. Then continuing in Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And then our final scripture is James chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace and keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it, if it is not accomplished by action, is dead. Then John chapter 6, verses 30 through 35. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the word. Thanks be to God. I'm reminded of a couple of different stories as we walk through this passage today. One is a bread story. It's not necessarily mine, but it's one that uh, my parents share with me quite often. I was uh, almost two months premature, and uh, I, my family was from Etna or, or Neoga, so close to the Mattoon and Effingham area, and being that premature, I was born in Springfield, and I was in the NICU for longer than I remember, um, and, and my parents shared that with me, but my dad and older brother uh, kind of lived that life away from a mom that, that was cooking meals, and they spent a lot of time in the car between Neoga and Springfield. And the story is, is that my dad and my older brother gained so much weight while I was in the hospital because they found a good bakery to always buy bread for, from whenever they were in Springfield. I'm not sure they ate any real food. They just made a point to come up and see my mom and me in Springfield and filled up on bread. And so we understand what being hungry is and how good good bread is and how good and amazing it smells. The second story kind of happened uh, over the course of the last month, but kind of got really kicked up a gear um, this last week. Um, it, it's amazing to me. I remember my first church and how much I didn't understand how I was ever going to be able to preach longer than 10 minutes. It makes some of you laugh now to know that I often go much longer than 10 minutes. And don't even get me started on how long uh, I prayed. Prayers were short, and I grew up understanding that, that prayers needed to be short because my dad always worked thirds, and sometimes the prayers during church growing up would put my dad to sleep because he'd get off working overtime and come to church, and if that prayer was a little bit too long, it would put him to sleep. 
He at least had the excuse of working thirds. I put some of you to sleep in the middle of a sermon, but I digress. But over the course of the last month, I, I went home and my wife told me, congratulations, that was the longest prayer I think you ever prayed in church. And then this last week, uh, we had a mission team meeting and uh, Lisa was gracious enough to open in prayer and, and somehow Samantha got onto this kick of, Dad, you pray too long. We got to the end of the mission trip meeting and Lisa said, does anybody want to pray? And Samantha reaches over and puts her hands on top of my hands and uh, somebody, it might have been Lisa there as well, said, Samantha, I thought you didn't like to hear your dad pray because he prays too long. She says, well, I don't. That's why my hands are on top of his, so he can't raise his hands. That brings me to now and today as I realize, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed these times within the Lord's Prayer because at first, jumping into the Lord's Prayer, I'm like, it's going to be hard to spend six weeks on the Lord's Prayer. But as I dive deeper into it, it's, it's just like regular prayer. There's so much to pray about, it's hard to keep prayer short sometimes. And especially this week as we jump in to give us this day our daily bread, I thought this was going to be the hardest week to preach on because how in the world can you spend more than five minutes on something as simple as give us this day our daily bread? And there's so much here to unpack. And so let us go ahead and, and jump into it. So who are we asking to give? Everything in this prayer points either back to something that happened before or something that's going to happen after. And we know who we are asking to give. We are asking our Father. The prayer begins off that way, our Father. And we still have those super important words that we're going to get into and hear Give us this day our daily bread. So if we're asking our Father to give, we also have these words of us and our in there. I knew this was going to be an entertaining service to give because sometimes I say the word us weird and sometimes I say the word our weird. So we'll just ignore the fact that I'm weird. Um, but as we walk through this, I began to wonder, how often do we use the words us and our just to mean myself? Think about that. Oftentimes we use the word we, and we're really just talking about ourselves as well. We don't want to sound selfish, so we use the, the royal we. Of course I'm talking about more than just myself, but I still use the word we, and so... As we dive deeper into this, the prayer is always talking more than just about myself. That's how Jesus taught, taught it. He didn't pr pray to my God, he prayed, or my Father. He said, our God, our Father. And the prayer continues, give us, not just me, but those around me, the people in the world, other human beings, give us our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. So any time that we pray it, hopefully we pray this prayer every single day, but give us our daily bread. Now here's what gets interesting, and I'll try not to nerd out on this for too long with you. What is daily bread? Daily bread is something specific. Give us this day our daily bread. Seems kind of redundant, doesn't it? Can't we just say give us this day bread? But daily bread gets into that idea that everything gets uh, translated. We've talked about this before, that it wasn't until the 1500s that it seems like mainstreamly the Lord's Prayer got translated to English, and then it was from the, the Tisdell, went to the Book of Common Prayer, which ended up being in the King James Version, which now is what we share kind of predominantly through the Lord's Prayer. But before that, it was in Latin, and before that, it was in Greek. And whenever Jesus prayed this prayer, likely it was in Aramaic. And so we go into this word of daily, and how it, what, what was daily? Daily was actually a Greek word that if they traced it all the way back to this specific daily used in the Greek, this is the first time that word was ever used. And why is that a big deal? It's because 
they had to make up a word to say what Jesus was saying in his own language. And so instead of it be daily just being daily, and it could be that, likely, if I was to sit you all down with a pencil and paper and made you say, well, what is our daily bread? The answer is probably what you'd write down. It's our essential bread. It's what we need to exist. It's how we survive. We, we understand this idea of survival and essential bread. Whenever we start talking about bread, we understand that as well. For those of us that have spent much time at all in the Bible or in church, we begin to understand that, yes, bread means bread, but also bread means more than bread, right? We have the idea that we need to be fed a, a physical bread or a physical food, but we also understand, uh, as the scripture pointed to today, that uh, Jesus is the bread of life. We understand that there's even more to it than that because Bethlehem talks about uh, being a, a town of bakeries, a town of bread, and Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and so bread begins to circle around, and we begin wondering more and more about that. We go back to Deuteronomy and we hear about this idea of manna from heaven, this bread, this literal bread of life as the Israelites were wandering through the wilderness looking for food and sustenance. And they had very strict rules about it being their daily bread because if they took more than they needed and tried to hoard it away instead of sharing it with maybe somebody else in the, the camp that wasn't able to collect it, what would happen? It would spoil and so this idea of needing to come to prayer daily to ask for this daily sustenance of existence. So give us this day our daily bread. And, and so what does that mean? It means that whenever we pray this prayer, it means everything it needs to mean. Like I said during the children's moments is that sometimes we wake up and we pray and we literally need food. There are people, uh, probably even within our midst today, that are hungry. They don't even know when their last meal was. And if they aren't in our midst today, you know of them. You know there are people in your life that might be going to bed hungry, and if not, maybe we all need to find uh, some more friends or acquaintances or be able to open our eyes in town. And that's part of what this prayer is, is open our eyes, God, to the things that people might need around us. Remember, the, the prayer is pointing us to things back and, and forth within, within it. Remember, we just prayed, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to bring heaven down to earth, and, and part of that is making sure that everybody is fed. So we can pray this prayer, and the first line of the prayer, if we, if we just continue to repeat it, is give us this day our daily bread. And if I'm well fed, let those around me be well fed as well. And if we are well fed and we're watching things on the news or uh, we're just, somebody puts us in touch with this idea that there are starving people somewhere else within the world or within the community, how can we feed them as well? And then it continues to move on from there uh, to say, okay, people are beginning to have their needs met physically. How can we be fed spiritually? How can we tie people into a church family? How can we tie people into Sunday church? How can we tie people into Sunday school? How can we share the love of God outside the church building completely? How can we begin to share and share and share? physical food, emotional food, spiritual food. And we begin to understand how much this continues to open up. And let me just share, instead of just kind of the, the 10,000 mile view, let's come down a little bit closer. Think about how many schools and school districts uh, just in Illinois alone are on free and reduced lunch programs because we have hungry children in our midst. And it's hard, to, it's hard to listen and pay attention to your teachers when you're hungry. It's hard to do anything when you're hungry, and so we're beginning to try to reach out. Think about how many people are thirsty. 
Think about how hard it is to find food. Think about uh, food deserts. Even here in Greenville, if you live on the opposite side of town from IGA, and luckily IGA is kind of right in the middle of town, we still have people uh, within town that would have to walk if they didn't have a car uh, at least a mile and a half, if not two miles to the grocery store. And so how can individuals or churches or the community help make sure that people can make it to the grocery store and just the idea that sometimes things aren't affordable and how difficult that can be as well. So food and water and and how we get back and forth between all of those places and then housing and clothing and how much that stuff continues on. There's coat drives and clothing drives and uh, we have a thrift store but we also have the First Baptist Church has uh, ways to get clothing to people that need it for, for free and how beautiful and wonderful that is. And so the, the prayer begins to open our eyes up to just everything that continues to go on and sometimes uh, we are blind to it. Think about it this way. Did you know that Greenville has a homeless problem? We really need uh, intermediate housing for people because uh, people end up getting dropped in Greenville and don't even have a place to stay and there's no place to really put them up. And throughout this COVID time, the uh, hotels are getting more and more expensive to where the Ministerial Alliance can't really afford to help put people up there. And so there's needs within our own community, not just food, not just clothing, but housing as well and that's just here and that gets beyond and those might open us up to uh, drug problems and addiction problems and just difficulty with friends and family and what that comes down to is where we want to start pointing and blaming that sometimes people move to those things because there's pain in their life whether it's physical pain that that drives them to um, self-medicate or whether it's emotional or spiritual pain that drives them to self-medicate as well it doesn't uh, it doesn't make an excuse it just means that we have to figure out ways to love one another and so hopefully this prayer continues to open you up to just the multitude of, of things that it's saying that's this is why uh, as samantha says uh I, I i don't have short prayers because my heart breaks for so many different things and one thing leads to another and before long you realize that there is so much to pray for that you just can't stop the prayer also has to stop and we've talked about that throughout the lord's prayer is that on the one hand it is a prayer it's a conversation it's a laying aside of our burdens and casting our cares aside and it's this conversation that we have with god Uh, Not because God needs to know, but because we need to know and ask that we are able to see more clearly. But it's also asking God to put action into our life, our life, not just my life. And and it might be something that you need to do personally, but how can you do something personally that connects with something that somebody else has on their heart? And part of that answer is the church. Because we are a community of faith. And so how can something that is drawing near to your heart that somebody else might be sitting close to you, that's also something on their heart, and how does that become a church movement? How does that become a community movement? How can we begin caring for one another? That's what this prayer is asking us to do. It's, it's how are we going to be moved from prayer to action? How are we going to move, be being moved from saying, thy will be done? Well, what's thy will? It's for us to move, and it's for us to make earth look a little bit more like heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Asking for our daily bread is part of saying, God, let us do your will. God, let us do your will. And next week, and next week we're going to continue this on because guess what the next word is and and just connects the two together and so we begin to learn next week that part of our daily bread is guess what to forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. So part of our daily bread that we'll discuss next week is, is simply that. It's forgiveness. So as we're praying for our daily bread, it, it might lead, uh, sadly enough, to a little bit of judgment. Well, why are other people hungry? Not for fit, just for physical food, but why else are they hungry for uh, spiritual or emotional food? Why, why are people don't not have the clothing? Why do they not have the housing? Why all of those things? And we'll have to ask for forgiveness for ourselves as well as others. And so we'll move into that. But let me let me catch you up on to where we are right now with within our prayer. And, and I'll pray this prayer as, as a longer prayer, but where we are right now is here. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So here in just a second, I'll, I'll pray through and, and what that looks like whenever we use this as a model for prayer and not just the exact words and, and how it begins to open up new possibilities. But that's one of the things I wanted to share at the beginning that I didn't make it to. This prayer, the reason why uh, you can preach on it for longer than, than five minutes total and have six weeks of longer than maybe you want to listen about it, is this, is because it's a sacred prayer. It's a prayer that stood the test of time, but, but not only that, it is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Not as a, a ritual, not as... This, uh, these are the words that you always have to pray because guess what? We'd all be praying it in Aramaic or Greek or Latin, something that, that wasn't English if that's how it was always taught, but it got translated to English to be still a sacred prayer whenever we begin to use it as a model and begin to change the words. So let us close now uh, in, in prayer uh, with me praying um, kind of the first three phrases in a longer version. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are not just my Father, you are our Father. Father of those who look like me and those who are very different from me. Father of those people I love and those I struggle to love. Help me remember they are all your children. You are our Father the one who created us, who loves us, who protects us, who walks with us and longs for the best for us, the one from whom all blessings have ultimately come. Father, you hold the entire universe in your hands. You are present with the saints who have gone before us, yet you are all as near as the air that I breathe. Hallowed be thy name, not my name, but your name. Let your name be holy. May others see your majesty and beauty and love. May they see this in my living and in my loving. Let me make your name holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my kingdom, God, but thy kingdom come. May your rule and reign come in my life in the lives of your people until it expands and fills the earth. I submit to your rule and honor you as my king. Thy will be done, not mine. Help me to sense your leading. Help me to long more than anything to do your will. May your will be done on earth, not just in my life, but in how we as humans live and love, just as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. I lift up to you, O oh Lord. Those who don't have enough to eat or who lack the other necessities of life, help me pay attention to see and notice those in need. Please use me and your church to generously share with them. Give me today, dear Lord, the bread I need, your presence, your love. Be for me the bread of life today, Lord, and satisfy my heart. Be with all those around that hear your prayer and allow it to mean something within their very being and allow them to take that prayer out into the world and be encouraged to love their neighbor as they love themselves. 
In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Let us now stand as we are able and we will sing our hymn of commitment. Let us break bread together. The words will be on the screen or on page 618. Here in just a moment, we will continue with our doxology, but once again, thank you so much for your continued uh, offerings and ties to the church. Uh, we are still collecting our offering in the back of the church, uh, down the center aisle, there is an offering plate, um, but also if you need to, to send them in uh, through the mail or, or just stop by throughout the week, that's another way that you can give. The money truly does help uh, us continue to be a beacon of hope within uh, the community. Um, and, and always the, the sad but, but true thing is sometimes it's about keeping the lights on or the heat on, which is one of those essential things. Uh, but before too long, it's always amazing whenever you change seasons. People are so happy that it's getting warmer. Before too long, we'll be grumbling that it's too hot. Um, so it will also help with those things. But thank you so much for your continued uh, offerings and support of the church. And we are going to sing our doxology followed by our offertory prayer. Let us pray together. Patient and merciful God, we bring our offerings humbly on this day, hoping they will bring fruit to the ministry of your church on earth. We ourselves have not always set our priorities on bearing good fruit, and yet you are a patient gardener. You have sent saints into our midst to make the soil richer, yet like the stubborn fig tree, 
good fruit has been scarce. May our journey this Lenten season feed our spirits to bring forth the fruit you desire. We pray in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We just have a couple of announcements, I believe. There is a calendar within your bulletin, and there is an updated and I think final list of who is going on the mission trip. Um, so there's that list that you can begin praying for people there as well. Am I missing any announcements? Okay. Well, let us go ahead and, and sing. And uh, it, it was a nice week because it was hard to find songs that weren't too communion-y. Communion so we get to sing a nice uh, spring uh, hymn, uh, Pass It On. So let us sing together. reminder that after the benediction, you are, are welcome to stay for a time of joys and concerns as well. I don't think a benediction can be shared better than the third verse of Pass It On, because I think outside of physical food, whenever we get to, to the spiritual food of God, this is part of the daily bread. So let us hear this benediction as is verse three of Pass It On. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you are bound. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. I want the world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. So let us go out into the world with the love of God, sharing it and passing it along from not only from the mountaintop, but from the streets of Greenville. In your gracious name we pray. Amen.